this is the Mac Daddy here. I got a brand new uh, a fanny pack holster here for my carry gun. And I got this from uh, Amazon.com for like $24. And you open this up here, and this is where your gun is going to go. This is all adjustable here. And uh, you, you can even set it up for a left-handed person. Uh, the, the nice thing about this fanny pack here is it'll hold full-size guns with up to a 6-inch barrel. The barrel actually goes into this little pocket over here. So this will hold some huge guns. So I have a much more uh, much more options of what kind of gun I want to use to carry now. If you notice on this side here, there's pouches here. This is for uh, magazines. So you can put magazines for you guys with your semi-automatic pistols here. So you can stick your magazines in there. You got little extra pouches here for stuff. Uh, this this over here is for my smartphone. There's a pack. There's a little uh, pouch in the back for like money or something or special certain kinds of valuables. I guess I don't have that many valuables. Anyway, so before I got this gun, some of the guns that I were using for carrying before was something like this one here. This is a, uh, a Hungarian PA63, a nine millimeter Makarov. Now this gun is, uh, you know, it's a nice gun, but you know, nine millimeter Makarov is 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 in between 380 ACP and nine millimeter uh, Luger, so it's not a particularly powerful. But I always carried this on because it would fit in the in the pouch that I had because the one I had before it would only it would only uh, hold uh, compact pistols. Anyway. So I'm not going to be using this one in this. The other gun that I use as a carry gun is this guy right here. This guy is a... Uh, this guy here is, is an East German made uh, Makarov pistol, which is also a 9mm uh, Makarov. And I used to carry this on me. I like this one because it's all steel and... Uh, it, it doesn't have as much recoil as this little guy over here because this one's got an aluminum frame so it's, it's a lot lighter a lot more recoil so I'm not gonna be using that probably now this guy over here this guy This guy over here is a, uh, a 1911 A1 I bought back in, uh, I think, around 1981. This is a uh, an auto ordinance uh, made in, uh, what do they call it, East Hurley, uh, New York. And uh, over the years, I've done a lot of uh, work on this gun. I put an extended magazine release on it, uh, a target trigger. I put a national match barrel and bushing in it, some Bomar... Uh, 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 target sights on it I uh, I did a polish on the on the feeding ramp and I throated and polished the uh, the chamber the feed ramp on the barrel as well so this gun will feed uh, empty cases so it'll feed just about anything uh, I love this gun it's it's this is the government model and it's the only government that I really trust in but as far as carrying this gun what bothers me about this gun is carrying this thing cocked and locked because it's not really drop safe. But uh, I love this gun. It's just a great, great pistol to shoot. But I don't think that I'll use this in this gun. And, and, you know, surprisingly, this will fit in here. This gun actually will fit. I've already tried it. It'll fit. It will. Okay. All righty. What, I, what other guns we got here? Ah, here's another gun here. <laughs> this is a 1918 Luger. Uh, I don't think I carry this gun. It's a beautiful gun. It shoots really nice. When it shoots, uh, it's, a little, it's a little temperamental at times. And I wouldn't want this to jam at the wrong time if I'm going to use it to defend myself. So I guess I won't be using this one. But it's a beautiful gun. You'll notice so far that I don't have any of these plastic, uh, these plastic pistols out there like the Glocks or the, or the Smith and Wessons or whatever. I don't. I just don't have those guns. I just never gotten any of them. I never liked uh, the plastic guns. I really never did. This guy over here. 
This is a British uh, uh, Webley Mark IV and 38200, also known as uh, 38 Smith & Wesson. You notice this is a break action gun, six shooter, double action. This is a sweetheart of a gun to shoot, but it's a little underpowered. This one will fit in here really perfect, easy. I don't think I'll use this one. I don't think so. Oh, uh, what else we got here? <laughs> Here's another Webley. This guy is a Webley. This is actually the oldest revolver I have. This one was made in 1915. And this is a 455 Webley. It's also a revolver, double action. It's also a break action gun. I love this gun. It, I can shoot this gun bench rest. I can I can shoot it about two inches. I make two inches two inch groups with, with this at about 25 yards if I bench rest this thing. Even with my bad eyes, this is just a great pistol. I love this pistol. The only problem is that I don't really have a speed loader for this thing to so I can speed load this to reload it fairly quickly. So I don't know about that one. It's a good choice though. Okay, what else we got here? Uh -huh. All right. This guy over here. <laughs> I love this gun too. This is a Colt 1917. This particular pistol uh, was one of the last ones they made in January of 1919. So that makes it 104 years old. It's older than me. Why would I carry a gun like this? Let me tell you. First reason why I would carry a gun like this is it's a Colt. It's a real fucking Colt. It's not one of those, the Colt set that was, that was made after CZ bought out Colt. You know, CZ is a company from the Czech Republic, so this is a real Colt, and I don't, I don't want to hear you guys whining about, hey, found the real Colt out now, yeah, yeah, right, 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 you go ahead and tell me that, you guys think of that, you guys believe that, go ahead, anyway, so, uh, like I said, this is, this is a, this is a Colt pistol, it's in 45 ACP, what I really love is I could use full moon or half moon clips on this to load this, so it's got modern, I mean, it's got speed loaders, that are easy to drop in it's so that's it's that's a that's another plus another plus thing about a revolver is that i am really very comfortable with a revolver because all i have to do to shoot this gun is pull the trigger because this is a double action gun all i have to do is pull the trigger and it'll shoot there's no safeties there's none of that crap there's no i don't have to worry about about which safety if it goes up or it goes down to fire i don't have to worry about that all i have to do is pull the trigger and like I said, this thing's got the, uh, it's got the uh, foam moon clips. You drop them right in, so you reload them fast. So this is like, this is this is the one I might pick. Okay. Now what else have we got here? Let's uh, see. Uh oh, I got two more over here. Hold on, let me go and get them. You don't have to show me. All right, here's my other last two here. Here we go. This guy here is a Ruger Security 6. It's in 357 Magnum. I love 357 Magnum. If you really want to have to, if you have to reach out and touch someone, this is the gun, this is the cartridge to do it with. This thing will uh, will go through a car door like butter, uh, unlike a 9mm or a 45. Uh, it's a great defense round. It's not overpowered, but it's it's just about just about right. This particular gun I bought, this is my first handgun I ever bought in 1978 when I turned 21. It's got a smooth, smooth action because I went and I took it apart a long time ago, 30 years ago or something, and I polished all the parts on it. And it's just so smooth. Really nice. I love this gun. But I also love this gun. This is a Ruger Red Hawk. Now this baby here... This isn't 44 Magnum. Uh, there's nothing like a 44 Magnum. Uh, the only the only only uh, cartridges that are more powerful than that. There's there's like four or five of them. 454 Castle. The was it the 460 Ruger? I guess. So there's a five 500 Smith and Wesson. Maybe I can't remember all of the cartridges, but this is still a pretty powerful cartridge. And uh, if I if I had this gun. If I was walking around in the woods somewhere and one of those cocaine bears attacked me, because I heard about these cocaine bears. If one of those cocaine bears attacked me, I wouldn't have any trouble at all. I'd say, screw you, I'd shoot them all, I'd shoot them down. Anyway, so this is another gun that I would, I, I might pick. 
But I got to tell you, the gun that I actually ended up picking in the end to carry, and you're gonna you're gonna get upset, but I got to go with this Colt. It's it's 104 years old, but it's a great gun. It's just a great gun. I love it. Oops. Try to get this in here. So this is the one I'm going to take. Oh, I'm sorry. It goes this way. Excuse me. <laughs> what a dummy. There we go. So there it is. That's the gun I'm going to be carrying. And, uh, since this doesn't have a magazine, what I've done is I have uh, in this pouch over here, I have four preloaded, four preloaded uh, full moon clips. So I'm set. Now I'm sorry, you guys, with the with your semi-auto pistols. I mean, with, with your uh, your automatics and your plastic guns. This is just comfortable for me. Uh, I don't have any problem with, with carrying this gun. And that's all I gotta say. Out of all these guns, this is the one I wanna carry, even though it's a even though it's an antique. It's because I'm an antique, okay? So I wanted to thank my daughter, Diane, for filming this. You gonna say thank you or say say, say I, I, I should, should, should say thank you to you. Are you gonna say you're welcome or something? Diane, say something. You're welcome. Okay, that's enough.